This is your morning in eight minutes. We are following breaking news on this Monday. Claudia Scheinbaum projected to become the first woman and person of Jewish descent to become the president of Mexico. This is the country's election results show Scheinbaum received over 50% of the vote. We'll have more on this story coming up on WBXX, the CW Knoxville. Meanwhile, at least one person is dead. 24 others hurt after a mass shooting in Akron, Ohio. It happened yesterday. Police say at least two victims are in critical condition. A reward of more than $20,000 now on the table for any information leading to the arrest of a suspect. Police say the victims range in age from 19 to 43 years old. Most of them are in their 30s. They say the evidence suggests it was a drive by shooting at a birthday party that happened sometime after midnight. Officials say they believe some party goers might have returned fire. More than 100 people could be witnesses in this, and they could be key to identifying and capturing whoever's responsible. Well, Sheriff Michael Hodges tells us one person was shot at a rental property in Wares Valley Sunday morning. He says people were fighting at a party, which escalated to shots being fired. Yes, this is in Sevier County. The victim expected to survive. We are working to learn more about where this happened and who was involved. We'll let you know as soon as we have those details. And right now, police are investigating a stabbing at Crooch Park. Knoxville police responded to the park Saturday evening. Officers found a man there who was stabbed. Officials say they believe he's homeless. They searched the immediate area and didn't find the suspect. The victim was taken to UT Medical Center. Right now, police are asking anyone with information to come forward. And two hikers are safe this morning after being saved by the National Guard from different rescue missions in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This all happened Friday. The guard says the first call came in around 2 p.m. for a hiker in respiratory distress near Mount Lacant Lodge. The second call came in around 7.30 that evening for a hiker in cardiac distress along the Alum Cave Trails, both taken to University of Tennessee Medical Center for treatment. We got a traffic alert for you. Starting today, the National Park says the spur will be down to one lane. Crews are working to clean up the area, replacing damaged signs and mowing. This goes into effect at 7 o'clock this morning until 4 o'clock today. It is daily. The first round ends this Thursday before it picks back up again next Monday, ending on June 13th. And right now, Appalachian Bear Rescue caring for yet another bear cub hit by a car in Sevier County. A call came into the rescue Thursday night around 9. ABR says a person at the scene of the accident saw the little bear, moved it off the road, and called TWRA. They say Mama Bear was in the area and was calling out to the cub, but the cub could not respond. TWRA took it to UT's vet college. Doctors did not find any broken bones, but they do think the bear has a concussion. The bear ate some and rested for most of the night when it was rescued. The name of the bear, Jackie P. Bear. It's the fourth injured cub in a row the rescue has taken in. And authorities in Cock County need your help finding the person who abandoned these two small dogs in a cardboard box last week. Witnesses say they saw a blue car with a spoiler dump the two dogs off of Thinwood Drive Wednesday. They say one of the dogs looks hurt and sick. Right now they have food and water as well as a warm place to stay. But the sheriff's office wants you to know there are many different options before you dump helpless animals, including taking them to one of our many local humane societies. If you have any information about this specific incident, please call the Cock County Sheriff's Office. Well, if you were one of the lucky ones selected to view the highly anticipated synchronous fireflies, you get your first chance to see them today in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Viewing opportunities at Alcabon start today. They go until next Monday, the 10th. Each reservation allows one car with a max of seven people. Park officials say the number of daily reservations is based on parking capacity and the ability to accommodate a large number of people. During the viewing season, no one will be allowed access to Elkmont after 4 o'clock, except for those with a reservation, registered campers staying at the campground, or backcountry campers with a permit. Whole cucumbers out of Florida from a Florida-based company have been voluntarily recalled due to possible salmonella. The cucumbers were shipped in bulk to over a dozen states, including Tennessee. The FDA says customers have been notified of the recall, and the cucumbers have likely already been pulled from shelves. However, you can reach out to where you got the product to find out if the store sold that affected produce. WBLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols, and the Vols are moving on this year as hosts in the Super Regionals. And the Vols ending up on top all weekend long, taking down Southern Miss 12-3 last night to win the Regional, completing their perfect weekend. Tennessee, the number one team in the land, they now wait to play the winner out of the Greenville Regional. East Carolina and Evansville meet up for a game seven at noon today. The winner comes to Knoxville for the Supers this weekend. We'll bring you updates as we get them both on air and online. 6.55 now, we want to get a check of your first alert traffic with Kristen Allen. 
Good morning. Keep an eye on that first alert traffic for you this morning. Seen a few folks hydroplaning out there, but for right now we are mostly in the clear. I-40 just east of downtown. Traffic through downtown Knoxville looking great this morning. Not seeing any slowdowns for you at this point. Taking a look here at West Knoxville, West Knox County. Not seeing any slowdowns on 40 or on Pellissippi Parkway. We were seeing some earlier in Oak Ridge. Those have since cleared up though. Hopping back here closer to downtown. You can see we are all in the clear looking good as you get out the door this morning. Take Taking a quick look at those drive times, 40 East, Pellissippi to downtown Knoxville, taking you 11 minutes, Alcoa Highway North and 75, both looking good for us. Almost 656 now, if you're running out the door this morning, just know that I'm tracking those downpours for you as they develop right now. We've got this one that rolled across Knox County that's rolling into Jefferson, kind of scooting along the edge of Granger. We do have a new spot of rain that has developed in North McMinn. So again, they're popping up because it's humid. That's what we all share. Sitting at 64 right now, Knoxville, 67, Kingston to 62, La Follette and 63, Sneedville. A warm, muggy morning as this rain continues to move northeast at 20 miles per hour. You can expect that to basically drive across Dandridge towards Cock County. It'll be around Douglas Lake, 716, Newport, 745. But that's just the storm we have right now, or the downpour, I should say. We do have some areas of fog along the plateau and Tennessee, Kentucky line. We're using the humidity across the board. It's impacting your lows this morning, your views between spotty rain and fog. We'll have isolated downpours and storms developing this afternoon as we stay steamy. Mid 80s today through the next couple of days. But really what we're building up to is more rain and storms ahead of a cold front. So we'll feel those changes ahead. So I've got it all tracked out for you coming up on the CW. Yeah, a lot going on on that first alert forecast. Heather, thank you. We're headed over to the CW in Knoxville. We hope you have a good Monday.